Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Fix Your Form. I am your host, Silent Mike, also known as Mike Farr. And in this series, I take your guys' lifts. I try to critique and help you get better form. If you want to get involved, first thing, you need to subscribe. Smash the thumbs up. Give this thing a like. Comment below if you guys are digging the videos. And send your lifts. We need three reps. at 70% of your one rep max sent to askmikke at gmail.com. First critique, I love the shimmy, I love the setup, the mental focus here, the pull-up of the, the squat diaper, and we're in position. Let's see what we got. Not bad. So your weight's getting pushed a little bit forward here, and I think that's because your knees are a little too far forward and hips are a little bit down. Uh, another issue that we might see, as my man Bro Science says, uh, you always start with 135. It looks like you have 25s. Oh no, maybe that is 45s. For some reason, they look uh, too short. Um, and maybe you're taller than I think, but with the deadlift, the height of which you pull from is always the exact same. Um, that's standardized. That's a standard Olympic plate. Um, and I'm not sure, but these look very low. Uh, and so that might be throwing you off, almost making this lift a deficit deadlift, which is more difficult to check your form. Um, overall, it's pretty dang solid though. So what I would focus on is trying to get your hips slightly higher and then still weight behind the bar. I did a whole episode on this because uh, it is the most common problem I see is people trying to squat the weight up. We're going to get the shimmy and the, the, the pull in slow-mo now uh, for all those ladies or gentlemen. Uh, who am I to judge your cup of tea? A little, sh a little quad flash flexing the quad. He's got the mirrors. Um, so I'd always like lifters to face away from the mirrors majority of the time so you can kind of feel your body in space. That's just a general tip for everybody listening. Um, two, you might want to step a little bit uh, further back from the barbell just to start. Um, and then right there, that position before you sink your hips is probably where we want to start from. Shins a little bit more vertical for this individual. As you see there, as you try to pull, your knees get in the way and your body gets shot forward a little bit. So I try to make sure that you're using standard uh, Olympic plates. I shouldn't say standard because standard is the other side, uh, size of plates. We want Olympic plates um, because that will uh, distinguish the standard height. And that's going to put you in a better position to pull from. Obviously make it easier because it's higher off the ground, less of a deficit. But I think if my eyes do not fool me, which they don't very often, uh, that that will put you in a better position to pull. Uh, overall, the pull is pretty dang decent. If it is 70%, it looks a little heavy for that, so I'd reevaluate where your one rep max is. Um, it also looks like you might be going double overhand, uh, which is very difficult. Props to you, good to work on the grip, uh, but it ends up being very difficult. So hips a little bit higher, body weight behind the bar, um, maybe an inch or two back behind the bar uh, at the start, and then make sure you're lifting from the proper standard height. Uh-oh, someone's been watching Fix Your Form. This looks really, really solid. Uh, can't tell if you're hook gripping. Grip's a common question. What types of grips? What's good? What's bad? So there's something called a hook grip where you kind of grab your thumbs, popularized in weightlifting, um, and this basically making straps out of your hand, and that'll be a double over form. There's the mixed grip where one hand's over, one hand's under, and then there's double over with no hook, um, which tends to be limited by grip strength, and most people can't deadlift their uh best lifts that way. So if you're hook gripping, great. Uh, one little cue I'd like to see is try to twist that bar around your legs and get those elbows pointed backwards. That's just going to help flex your lats a little bit. Uh, but overall, my man, it's a really, really clean deadlift. Um, perhaps experiment with a little bit narrower stance uh, because it seems like you're kind of built to pull. Your form's already locked in. The more narrow your stance, if you can remain powerful and balanced, uh, the shorter the range of motion will be. And obviously over time, a shortened range of motion, you might be able to lift a few more pounds, a few more kilos, uh, month after month, year after year, and this may be beneficial. Uh, but overall, my man, really, really solid deadlift. Next in a good position, feet's in a good position. It looks like the bar stays really close to you, maybe right at your knee. It looks like it floats away a little bit. So make sure we want contact with our shins at the start, up our shins, and then up our quads all the way to lockout. The closer the bar is to our body, the lighter we feel and the stronger we will be. Um, and then it's just about locking in those lats. So get those elbows pointed backwards. If it is double over, it's going to be very difficult as you progress. And we'll have to switch to a mixed grip. Um, switching mixed grip, which hand goes over and which is under, is something I do suggest from time to time, especially when you're practicing. Just get used to both. And we're in the garage gym. I dig the setup, my man. Really solid. Really solid. I think we got about 365 on the bar, hitting some triples. Um, from this angle, same idea. 
is you can just see your knees at the start are kind of getting forced in just slightly from your hands. Uh-oh, we got a switch hitter. Uh, and what we want to do is, as much as we can, not have anything rub or be restricted. So if you can move your stance in so your arms can be straight on the conventional, the better. Uh, this sumo is actually fairly solid as well. I think you can force those knees out a little bit more, and that will allow your chest to be a little bit more vertical. Um, you know, stereotypically, people say, oh, high bar squat's so upright and a sumo deadlift so upright. Uh, conventional, you're going to be bent over, and a low bar, you're going to be bent over. Now, there's obviously some truth to that. Um, but even in some sumo uh, cases and different conventional cases, uh, one might be less vertical than another and one may be more bent over uh, than another in the sumo stance, excuse me, or both, I guess. But So for you, my friend, uh, since you're fairly hinging, which isn't bad, uh, just is how it is on this sumo here, we want to optimize it. And as much as you can force those knees out, open up that groinage, it will really allow yourself to be more vertical. The more you pull that bar into you, um, not necessarily pushing hips down, just chest up, knees out. Uh, and then all you have to do is lock it in, flex your quads from there. But actually, from this angle, uh, so far, both of those uh, pulls are very, very solid. we got the Beard Gang. It's a Beard Gang deadlift party. Last time we had Ladies Night. This time it's Beard Gang. I see a lot of people, I mean, I don't want to take credit for it, but I see a lot of people kind of using this Ed Cone style, control the eccentric on your reps, and boy, do I dig it. Oh, this is the same gentleman. It's not Beard Gang. It's the same gentleman, just from the side. So let's see here on the sumo. Yeah, I just think that it's a really good position. It really is. Um, but I do think that if you force those knees out just a hair more, you can get a hair more vertical uh, torso and get a little bit more upright. Pull that bar really tight into you on the sumo. Uh, and you'll be really, 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 really uh, well off. And to be honest, it's going to be difficult for you um, just choosing, I guess, which one uh, you want to kind of make your main stance. You can train both. Uh, you could probably be very good at both. Looks like you got some muscle and some training years under you, uh, and it's just about which one kind of feels a little bit better, or which one do you want to make small tweaks to, uh, to overall make your best. You know, training both stances. If you, you know, I, I typically suggest most people deadlift, maybe a year to three years conventional, and really learn the hip hinge and build some muscle, um, and then from that point on, you could maybe train a little bit of both. Uh, sumo pullers, I think it's almost necessary to do some kind of conventional, whether it's from the ground or block pulls in your off season. Um, if you're a conventional puller, a sumo may help, but it may not be necessary. I may lean more towards a block pull or a deficit or some of that nature. Sumo boys in the house, another hitting it around 365. This looks really good too, and it looks like you might have a hook grip uh, smashing, and, and I would suggest the same thing. So this is whether you do overhand hook grip or mixed grip. I can't see. I'm trying to see if the thumbs wrap up. Oh, no, he's just going double over. Strongman style. I dig it. So eventually, oh, maybe you grab the hook there. But again, so once you get closer to your one rep max and you get stronger over the years, you will have to eventually probably go with a hook grip or a mixed grip. And with both of those, what we really want to do is cover our armpit with our shoulder, which we talked about in a lot of different videos. Uh, but also, kind of like the bench press, we almost want to tuck those elbows. Uh, you want to bend that bar into your body. In this case, you're almost going to bend the bar towards your pinkies. So you're going to pull, fold your pinkies inwards, and that's going to force that elbow shoulder torque if you want to call it. You can call it whatever buzzword you want to call it. Uh, but the point is that we're trying to flex our lats as hard as humanly possible. And getting those elbows pointed backwards, pointed behind us, uh, will do so. You do it slightly there, and you are flexing your lats pretty decent. Back's in a really, really solid position. I think you're really optimizing your leverages. The pull is actually really, really, really good. Uh, but that last little tweak, as much as we can breathe and brace, uh, which is a cue for everybody because I can't always see it visually, you know, you want to blow up your stomach your sides and your low back with air and really flex down, making that as rigid as possible from your ribs to your hip. And then we're going to take our lats and we're going to make it as rigid as possible from our shoulder to our hip. So we're basically just trying to, oh, we got a lady in the house. She didn't make ladies night. She's hopping in on the gentleman's night. Uh, we're going to try to make it as rigid as possible and then really uh, just flex our legs. And that's it. Flex your, lag, uh, your lats, flex your stomach and go. Pretty mobile, pretty clean. She's got some straps on. Uh, grip looks pretty solid. Another common question is, you know, how far in or out is your grip? Conventional, you're going to have to just force it as close as you can to your legs. Sumo, uh, depending, but most of the case, I want a straight line. I want a straight line from those shoulders to the bar, and that's going to optimize two things. It's going to optimize balance, because if you go too narrow, that's probably an issue. Uh, and it's also going to optimize range of motion. If you go too wide, you're going to have to pull that bar up. And it will also optimize pretty dang solid from the side, too. Um, It'll also optimize how hard you can flex your back. 
So she's a pretty upright puller. Hips are very low. We've talked about it also. A higher hip compared to a lower hip uh, position in the sumo. And this is mostly going to depend on how you're built. So it's not like you choose. You know, it's not a high bar, low bar, bar situation. It's not a grip on the bench. It's just kind of your leverages. If you have a shorter torso and longo arms, shorter torso and longer arms. I just got a lisp out of nowhere. You're going to have to probably pull with a lower hip position and almost squat the weight up. That's not going to be the majority of us. The majority of us are going to be a little bit more average built, uh, and we're going to have our hips slightly higher and hinge on those suckers. Uh, but for you, uh, Michelle, shout out to your Instagram. Go get, go get a follower or two. Um, what we're going to have to work on over time is getting, making sure you have tension in your hamstrings and glutes on that setup before you pull. And then over time, it'll just be a matter of really strengthening your quads. Your quads are probably going to be your limiting factor. Um, Sumo pullers in general, the stronger your quads are, the better off you're going to be. I mean, power lifters in general, the stronger lats and quads you have over time, the stronger you're going to be in all three lifts, just kind of how it goes. Uh, but I do like the pull. One thing you can see a little bit of rounding in that back, and I think that's just because of uh, maybe the belt placement and how it looks. But as much as you can breathe and brace into that thing, not hinging on your erectors and really hinging on those hips, uh, and then as strong as quads you can get, I think you've got a bright, bright future as a sumo puller. Um, Honestly, not much to say. The elbows, same thing as the other gentleman. Uh, get those things forced and back. Really flex your lats. The more upright you are, it is a little bit more difficult to flex those lats than if you're uh, horizontal, but um, still really, really solid. Back to conventional. Ladies and gentlemen, not bad. Looks like we got four wheels on this puppy. Looks like you might be rushing that setup a little bit, my man. Make sure that you really take your time. Take a big breath into your stomach, flatten that back out, and then pull. You can see the bar wobbling back and forth on the ground before you that pull, and that kind of shows me that your lats aren't locked in, and that also that your knees are kicking that bar forward. Um, so one thing that I would suggest is trying to start. You see that momentum of the barbell in the slow-mo is going forward on your pull, and that's never going to help the situation. So upon starting... I would start with your shins slightly further back from the bar. We always want that momentum of that bar either coming towards us or straight up. Uh, we don't want it kicking away from us at the start. It's going to put a lot of stress on our lats, uh, our upper back, and even our lower back as the weight gets further away from us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, subscribe. We'll be back soon with more videos.